speakers. Way, that's what he likes. Bit of jingle bells. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the uh, 66th Copyright and Online Learning at a Time of Uncertainty webinar. My name is Chris Morrison. My name is Jane Tecker, and we are the co-chairs of the Association for Learning Technology Special Interest Group on Copyright and Online Learning. Yes. Which is the coolest group. It's the coolest special interest group of all the interest well, groups. Why we've got snow, part of the snowman behind us, isn't so, it? It is cool. Um, I have to say, we're feeling a bit warm, aren't we? We are. We're, we're not feeling that cool. And this this shirt seems to get tighter every year. I'm not sure what that's about. No, mine's mine's fitting me nicely. Actually, I've got okay. loads of room in mine. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, some of us have All been right. working out this year. Uh, yeah. So we are delighted to be with you today with what you can clearly see is a Christmas themed webinar. Yes. Um, well, I can't believe actually how much effort Matt's gone to as well with yeah, your backdrop. That will, is we looking will. lovely, Matt, really. <laughs> we will introduce uh, our guests uh, today in a moment. Well, we should we actually get the slide back up that will explain yeah. to people what's going what on. is actually going, what's going on. I don't know, someone will explain to me what's going on, that'll be handy. <laughs> um, so uh, as we said, today is our Christmas special. It's the Big Fat Copyright Quiz of the Year with Matt Yay. Woods and Catherine Drum. Um, so welcome to them. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, but we've very been exciting. Some copyright news uh, and also uh, talk about what's coming next because this is not the end of the road by any means, is no! it? No, no, we can go on forever and ever. Yay! Right. So let us uh, do a quick update of what's happened since we last met. Um, what's been going on? So in my world on the left, uh, I have recently bought a new guitar. Anyone that's seen me in my natural habitat will see that I've got a ridiculous number of guitars on the wall. Now I've got a new one. It looks a bit like a violin, doesn't it? It does a bit. This is a lap yeah. steel guitar. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was very excited to get that. And I've got some benders to go on it as well. String I benders. I don't even know what bend, those are. They bend the strings. I don't know what those uh, are. That's, I'm sure they'll feature at some point. Yeah. If we want a sort of morose country tinged web themed webinar at some point anyway. about you know, the copyright country blues or something something like that yeah um, looking forward to that song. but your your news on the right this was a photograph taken at a particular moment in time <laughs> wasn't it you just received some rather excellent news i did yes 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 no i i was very excited to um find out um this week uh, it's been announced to my colleagues i've been made an associate professor so lots of people keep calling Woo! me professor, but I think yeah. I'm actually only half a professor. You're half, I think you're, I'm very happy to accept the title of professor, you can, obviously. You can, you can, I will yeah. answer to it, yeah. but I think I'm actually technically <laughs> a, a, an associate professor, which means uh, yeah. don't call me that. You but you are a, twice a doctor. Well, so yeah. does that bump you up? You're doctor, doctor, associate professor. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If you add those together, that must make you a proper professor. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yes. No, Doesn't mean you're allowed to become absent-minded and aloof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any more than you already are. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm going to become serious anytime no. soon. Okay. Either. No. So don't worry, everyone. At the point of serious, just, though, everything's ma just the same. Massively well deserved. You've put a lot of work to get where you've got to. Thank you. It, yes. Yeah. 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 No. It was. It. It, it was. It, if nothing, it was a mountain of paperwork to fill in. So yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so we do have uh, a, a, an archive, as most of you will know, of all the recordings and the YouTube channel um, where we keep all the stuff that we've done in the past. The Everyone knows where that is. Every other 65 um, episodes, if you want to catch yeah. up. Yeah. So we are going to cover. <laughs> Yeah. copyright news time it's copyright news clearly. yeah that sense um, mm. and uh, the first thing we were going to point out probably a few of you are aware of this that the copyright licensing agency has just recently published some research into artificial intelligence uh, which has involved interviewing a number of uh, different stakeholders and rights holders and publishers and finding out what their thoughts are around particularly generative ai which is uh, which is clearly of relevance to this community and we've had couple of sessions recently on that so it would be useful to have a look at that yeah see absolutely what, see what they find. yeah um, yeah yeah so we yeah. we'd flag that yes um 
Another thing that's coming up. Everyone's talking about AI. Everyone's talking Everyone's about AI. Everyone's talking about Everyone, AI. Everyone, everywhere, yes. CLA and I'm talking about AI. Yes. Yeah. Oh, of course they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the next thing is related to the fact that we are in uh, coming towards the end of the year. It is, yes. Yes, public domain day. Public Hooray. Domain day. Yes, so um, on the 1st of January every year, um, if you don't uh, currently celebrate public domain day, then um, why not think about having a public domain day party? <laughs> yeah, you can invite all of your friends and family uh, we, it may well all be... hung over on New Year's Day yes, to it... have another party uh, to celebrate, I don't know, the works of uh, Hank Williams, mm -hmm. uh, Sergei Prokofiev, um, Joseph Stalin. Looking forward to this a lot. And this is going to be a great 1st yeah, of Jan 2024. It is. Yeah. Um, so, and no, also thank you for that. Django Reinhardt. So I've got this oh. idea that you could have this sort of super group where you have uh classic country a bit of gypsy jazz some sort some of kind of intense a sort of highly chromatic uh romantic uh, orchestral music and some sort of authoritarian over vibes uh, yeah sounding amazing you bring them all together and at, at no one's going to chase you for licensing fees if no, you want to uh, no no to no. create some hideous ai mashup so somebody's probably on it already yeah they? yeah but no it is it is well worth um you know noting each year what are the works which authors works are coming into uh, going out of copyright coming into the public domain and i've got and, a link uh, in here we, which has got a link on, on wikipedia to the works that are going out which is where i yes got those names from yes yes you always do your research so well chris yeah, do well, done. well do done well done so what's our next news item are we looking ahead we are to what will be the bearing. end of the winter i know we haven't reached uh christmas yet but we will be uh, out the other side of all this darkness mm. and coldness. And then what better way of looking ahead to the rest of the year than Fair, fair Dealing Week, which we wanted to flag now uh, in order to uh, encourage people if they want to do something, if they're in a position to, to put into the programming at their institution, um, then please do. Mm, it's gonna... a good time to run some copyright training. It is, yeah. yeah. Encourage people to understand all about exceptions and how fair dealing works. So, yeah. yeah, a bit like Open Access Week, we want to make this a big thing, really, don't we? Mm. So, yes. Uh, what, what are we going to be doing? Uh, well, we haven't determined it exactly, have we? But we're hoping but to do something. We are hoping to do something. Yeah. Um, and there yeah. are some projects going on that may be ready for fruition where we can sort of share stuff. But we will we will let you all Watch know. Watch this space. Watch this space. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we are going to have a chat with Kyle, aren't we, at some point? Yes, soon. we absolutely so, are. Yeah, Kyle Courtney at Harvard, who's actually behind Fair Use Week. He set this up. Yeah, so um, we're in touch with him and we'll definitely do some more collabs in the future. Definitely, yes. More of which. Yes. Anyway, I will say no more because no, no. Uh, I don't want to steal the thunder, give the game away, say anything I shouldn't, because the main order of today is the big fat copyright quiz of the year. So, do, can, do, 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 do. so can we say hello to Matt and to Catherine? Hello, Catherine. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello Matt. Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> So excellent to have you with us and having devised this uh, marvellous quiz. So those of you who tuned in last year will know that um, Catherine is quiz quiz person extraordinaire. This is Absolutely. a picture um, from Catherine on television. Only Commit, on, Only Connect, yes, I think. Was this two the years ago now, Catherine? On the telly box. Something like, mm. something like that. <laughs> it's a blur. Yeah. It was during the pandemic, so. Yeah. It was, yeah. And you weren't actually wearing that Santa hat, I don't think, no. when you were on TV. But it does look good on you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Matt, uh, the mastermind behind uh, the recent uh, uh, reimagining of Ifless Copyright News um, and previous guest on the show, you've agreed to help set some questions. To and we're going to find out knowledge. how much people have been paying Absolutely. attention this year to what's Indeed. going on in the world of copyright. Yeah. So, yeah. How are you doing, Matt? Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's excellent over here. A nice, uh, nice rainy day as usual in the Hague, and uh, yeah, looking forward uh, to talking uh, about copyright. <laughs> love that northern European climate. Right. So I'm going to stop sharing the slides, slides now because um, uh, Catherine, you've set up uh, a quiz for everyone using Poll Everywhere. So it's a case of 
you're going to share your screen. Yep. Uh, hopefully this is going to work. Oh, excellent Christmas jumper, by the way, Catherine. Mm. Oh, thank you. That's as close as I get to a Christmas jumper. <laughs> okay. So we have a URL to go to or a QR code if you want to scan that on your device. And hopefully you should be able to join the quiz if we can have so some I messages. I, I don't think we're allowed to join, are we? Well, I'm just testing are it. We, I'm we, just testing it. Yeah, te that's fine to test it, but I think given that we've seen the questions down the answers. <laughs> well, I, why I, would that be a problem? I think that might be a problem. Why would that be a problem? I, I thought I might. I thought Professor Secker might give it a go. We are still recording this, aren't we? So we should probably stop recording if we're actually going to not record the quiz. Is that right? Why are we not recording the quiz? I thought we weren't. Oh, I thought we just weren't recording. You weren't recording the, the final bit. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to record the quiz? Yeah, let's okay. we can record fine. the quiz. Yeah. Fine, we will record the quiz. I'm not sure whether people will want to. Oh, no, I suppose they will. There's they interesting will. stuff. There'll be all sorts of copyright right. news. Yeah, yeah, we yes. might have had this conversation earlier on, mightn't we? We might. Well, this is, okay, yeah. right. This, this provides an excellent summary of what happened in the last year. So, uh, uh, yeah, yes. think, you know, uh, years later, people can play yeah. along or they can use it to uh, to refer back to what happened. Absolutely. We'll put a Creative Commons license on the video as well, then people can mash it up. All sorts of things can be done with it. Could, well, we'll see. Let's see. So, um, can I, right, can I just say that there should be an option to enter a, a, your participant name? Um, I've done something that. Good. Uh, something's been going a little bit odd with their automatically generated IDs, so they're not matching up with what appears on the leaderboard. So if you think you're in with the chance for of winning, make sure you put in uh, your own uh, ID so we can know who you are. Absolutely. So can a couple of people maybe put um, something, a response in the chat just to say if you have, if you can see in front of you, cool SIG and uh 24 questions that's what i can see catherine so is that what we're meant to be able to see I yes it is yeah questions. i'm checking on my phone okay. as well and yeah yeah, yeah. Great. okay yeah, fabulous lovely okay great okay so i think we might be ready to go i think so okay, okay. buckle up your seat belts get ready to play that big fat copyright quiz of the year okay oh, we're ready yeah. yeah. Well, it depends on correctness and how quickly you answer. So, speedy fingers get the points. Okay. Here we go. Excellent. So the first question: uh, This July, the fast food chains Taco Bell and Taco John settled a trademark dispute. Now everyone is free in America to advertise which Mexican food on a particular day. Okay. So that's the first question. And then is it the case, Catherine, you kind of open up yep. the options and everyone can, I open up can the, see? Right. Yep. And you can see the so countdown there in the bottom left. left. Tuesday, Fajita <laughs> Friday, it's Salsa Saturday. So there's a timer. We could have some countdown music. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do. Yep. That's How was great. that? That was, that was good. That was good. You don't need one of those little things with mm. all the little jingles on. You just got me. Do you know, we're having like a Mexican thing just on Christmas Eve. Right. Mexican, yeah. Right. With a pinata. And pinata. Yeah. One of those as well. Sombreros. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, so do we now, we, uh, the time's up. Aha. Oh. 91% got the correct answer. So Matt, can you tell us about what happened here then? What's this all about? Taco Tuesday. Yeah, so um, like a lot of people uh, in America and elsewhere, I had no idea that it was actually trademarked. I assumed it was generic. Uh, uh, at, at a previous job, like like uh, on Tuesdays, I remember a friend of mine would come around the office and be like, Taco Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, and we'd just go get tacos at a place that was not a chain. But uh, it was, in fact, under trademark since 1989 uh, in every state except New Jersey, where there's a different trademark. Uh, it's held by Gregory's Bar, but by a <laughs> relatively smaller taco uh, fast food restaurant called taco john's uh, which has about 400 locations taco bell is international i've seen them now in the uk uh, you may have eaten there uh and they have about 7200 restaurants in the the us uh but uh taco bell challenged taco john's in court about this and taco john's 
um, said it didn't want to spend millions of dollars in lawyers, but my guess is the ruling would be generic anyway. Uh, the result was that they relinquished the trademark. So now in everywhere except New Jersey, you're welcome to say Taco Tuesday until your heart's content. And no one <laughs> oh. um, for Taco Bell, you're not risking uh, anything. Except in New Jersey where uh, Gregory's Bar may come after you. Right, okay. So in New Jersey, I mean, presumably you're allowed to eat tacos on a Tuesday still. Oh, definitely. I, I assume so. I certainly have. Uh, and I hope that's no, I mean, a I criminal sorry. admission there. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Ah, uh, okay. And now I'm starting to feel hungry. Yeah, I was okay. thinking exactly the same. Oh, so where are we? Right. So Next we question. have a lot of people oh, with full points, and we have people's uh, names on here. So we can actually see your names. Excellent. So we can see. Uh, right. So all to play for. Still, I guess. Okay, Catherine. Takes to the next question. Okay. So. Hachette versus Internet Archive, the famous lawsuit. Yes, we've all been studying it. So, everybody, of the 1.4 million titles that the Internet Archive made available, we all know the story during the pandemic about the Internet Archive uh, making an emergency public library. How many of those titles were also commercially available? So, what do you think? And we have got... A number of choices for you here. So do you think it was 17 titles? Do you think it was 33,000 titles? Do you think it was 520,000 titles? Or was it practically all of them? 1.39 million were available commercially. Pop your answers in Not now. everywhere. In now. In, in now. Yeah. Pop them in now. Pop them in. <laughs> Off you go. Hey, I've missed that one. I'm you missed that one. Be, yeah, I'm going to be losing. Well, you don't need to. You're not supposed to be playing. I wanted to play. I would suggest you put your phone down because it's cheating. It's told me off. I have told you off. Okay. Are we there, Catherine? We are. Oh, a bit, bit, bit more division on this one. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. The so, the correct answer is actually 33,000 titles. Mm. Can you name some of them, Chris? Uh, I no. don't think it was copyrighted on my learning. No. Guy for practitioners. No, I don't think it was. Maybe it was. Maybe we should check. We should yes. Check. Anyway. So it was, it, the, yeah, well, we've got a reasonable number of people that got that one right, but I think that might have had a big impact on the leaderboard. Let's see where we get to. Um, but yes, Matt, do you want to talk to us about that that number then? Yeah, so that was uh, that was cited at Ice Pops this year, actually, by Kyle Courtney. Um, what's significant uh -huh. about it is that following the ruling, which is a lower court ruling in America, so it's going to be challenged at the higher courts. That's just how the process works. But yeah, following yeah. the ruling, which looked quite negative for the Internet Archive, uh, the judge issued a permanent injunction specifically against the titles that also had commercial ebook equivalents uh, mm. so that it doesn't necessarily legalize the rest of it but it certainly indicates a narrowing of scope and it's important to note that that applies to only 33,000 titles that is a fraction of what the internet archive actually made available yeah. so that's yeah. important context on what was being done and also important context on the law and actually signaling where it might be enforced in the future. Okay. It's very useful to know that. I think often when we're thinking about copyright risk, <laughs> when we're talking about controlled digital lending <laughs> concepts, it's like, is it okay? Yes, no, binary decision. There's a lot more nuance to it. So that's mm. very good to be bear in mind. So, brilliant. So we have three people vying for this. So we've got Caroline, we've got Megan, and, and we've got, got Guest 791. Guest 791. The enigmatic <laughs> Guest 791. Okay. Um, I'm so pleased they're here. Yeah, it's a good job. It's always a party when they're here. Right, next question. Who Who's promised to play a concert on the Mar Marrakesh Treaty's conclusion is credited credited with motivating delegates. So it is a performing artist who promised to play a concert at the conclusion of the important Marrakesh Treaty. Um, and who is, who is this that credited with motivating the delegates to come to the right decision? Mm -hmm. So next, uh, that is a biased um, consideration, but it clearly was the right decision. Is it Stevie Wonder? Was it Ray Charles? Was it, um, I think, Andre Bocelli? Uh, Andrea or Bocelli. Jose Feliciano? Andrea, that's it. Uh, it could be Andrew, for the purposes of this quiz. He can. 
Maybe this is a trick question and it actually was Andrew Bocelli. It could be. <laughs> His cousin. <laughs> We'll, we'll, just, we'll just pretend it was that and not my proofing skills. No, absolutely. <laughs> so, what was the answer? It was Stevie Wonder. <laughs> it, it was Andrew. Andrew Pacelli. Yeah. Uh, it was Stevie Wonder. Matt, what happened? Yeah, well, I wasn't I wasn't at Marrakesh. Uh, we did at WIPO this year. There were a number of celebrations at various events uh, for the 10th anniversary. Uh, the statistics that I have off the top of my head are um, that the Accessible Books Consortium there, uh, they've shared, I believe, 900,000 titles through Marrakesh. That's titles that are available for people with uh, visual uh, um, visual disabilities, visual impairments. Uh, this this can be uh, this can be blindness or you know short sightedness. Uh, this also I believe covers uh, uh, covers things more broadly as well. But it's a hugely important treaty. It's one of the last times that uh, they produced something like this. It's the first uh, rights based treaty I believe that was negotiated there. And part of the story goes that there were really intense negotiations going on, and at some point. Uh, word was getting around from Stevie Wonder that he was going to play a concert if they, uh, there were a lot of factors at play, but Stevie Wonder said, if you get this done, uh, I I'll, I'll play a concert. And he did. Fantastic. Uh, Stevie Wonder, if you, if, you know, it's so fantastic. I just love him so you much. Do, and you, you couldn't love him anymore, could you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or Caroline, <laughs> uh, you're edging ahead there. Um, <laughs> Catherine once saw Stevie Wonder in a gift shop in yeah. Tokyo. That's why we yeah. need to follow this. I went, I went on holiday. I went on holiday to visit yeah. some friends in Hong Kong. And on the first day yes. in Hong Kong, I saw Jackie Chan leaving a hotel. And then my friend okay. and I went to Hong, went to Tokyo for three days and we saw Stevie Wonder in a gift shop. Best star spots ever. That's I'm going to hang out with you some more, <laughs> Catherine. Absolutely. <laughs> It was probably nearly as exciting that time that you saw almost Professor Jane Secker in the theatre <laughs> and ended up sat behind her. Do you remember? I know. That, that's not your memory forever. Can't yeah. get away from her. Okay. We, no. can, we can move on now, can't we? Let's move yes. on. Come on, we've got to speed this up. We've got to keep going. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, right. So, next question. Which of these iconic poo elements... We're talking about Winnie Probably should have put, said no, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> just to clarify. Um, you might... Uh, still you might want to provide some context on here as well. Uh, okay. Oh, no, Matt, over to you if you want to provide a bit of context. So, Winnie the Pooh, created by A.A. A. Milne, and the drawings are E.H. Shepard, I believe, um, but it's all the property of Disney. Or the famous, there's a famous Disney cartoon. So, yeah, Matt, what is the, the context here? Well, in 2023, uh, uh, Pooh, or at least elements of Pooh, entered the public domain. And that prompted, of course, the release of a uh, horror film, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, uh, was financially successful. Um, Wikipedia says critics said it had poor dialogue, a lack of humor and connection to its basic source material. But uh, since it's public domain now, you, uh, you can also make your own horror film if you think you want to do better with Pooh-based elements. Um, however, 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 one of these things is is still under Disney's copyright. So, OK, so what do we think it is, everyone? Here we go, folks. So is it Piglet? Is it Pooh's insatiable love of honey? Is it the Hundred Acre Wood or is it Pooh's red T-shirt? Do 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 Oh, well, I wish I knew who made the joke on the internet, but the rule is generally uh, now shirt on the bear, artist beware. But if nude the bear oh. be who is free? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Okay. Caroline, you uh, are still in the lead, but Deborah is not far behind. Yeah. 
Um, and as well. So yeah, I think given you get a thousand points for a correct fast answer, you can easily jump ahead. And yeah. I mean, even Louise is not far behind. So let's keep playing. Let's yeah. keep going. Here we go. Next question. Okay. Are you doing this one? Yes. So, uh, Matt, I think we probably want some context from you here, but it's about uh, Disney attempting to keep Mickey Mouse under its control through trademark. So this is about the fact that the original uh, Mickey Mouse drawings. Uh, drawings were, again, the copyright in them was expiring. Yes, yes. So the first, uh, the first Mickey Mouse cartoon was Steamboat Willie. And that is mm -hmm. due to enter the public domain uh, the January 1st. So obviously, uh, Mickey Mouse, Steamboat Willie, all this is quite central to the Disney brand. And uh, the version, uh, we'll see We'll see what the line is between where Steamboat Willie ends and where the modern Mickey Mouse begins. But uh, some have speculated that Disney has been making a play uh, to keep Steamboat Willie under their control. So this question is, okay. what might they be doing? What did they do this year? or recently, uh, that might be an effort to expand their IP control of the expanding okay. Steamboat Willie. Let's go. Here we go. So conspicuously, a suspicious, suspiciously high volume of IP filings, incorporating Steamboat Willie into its logo, repainting its theme parts black and white, or suing yet another daycare. <laughs> Which of these is the option that we suspect they may be using? To keep the uh, Mickey Mouse under their control. You ready to do that countdown music now? I think we need to do it in two seconds. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the correct answer here is incorporating, incorporating Steamboat Willie into his logo. So what's happening here? Yeah, so um, recently, uh, if you look at, I think you can see this on like Disney Plus or the streaming. Uh, you'll see mm -hmm. it start with the Disney logo that they've incorporated actually a bit of Steamboat Willie into that. Um, I found out about this through uh, John Oliver's Last Week Tonight, a uh, British comedian who works in the U.S., but uh, he did a wonderful show that's kind of hard to find online because it was a few, just a few minute segments where he had someone in a Steamboat Willie costume come out and he uh, he's taunting Disney to sue him. Uh, and noted that he incorporated the uh, Steamboat Willie into his show's logo uh, over the last year, over the last season, so that he's also claiming it's a part of his brand. So uh, John yeah. Oliver wanting uh, Tom from Disney to sue him, uh, quite funny. Uh, but we'll see again what happens. We'll see wh whether Disney see, yeah. is going to assert this in this way, or whether you can also make a Steamboat Willie horror film now. I, I, yeah, well, we could consider both the Steamboat Willie horror film and incorporating it into our logo. Mm. But I think we might run out of time. You, you, can, you can make a crossover. You can make your own cinematic universe of horror films now with Winnie the Pooh and Steamboat Willie. <laughs> it's sounds horrendous. Um, Catherine, okay, Catherine there we and go. With Deborah now tying for, and, and Louise, yeah, not far behind. And Julie, well done. So, Oh, it's all to play for. It's very tight. Right, next, let's get on to the next question. Let's see what else we've got. So we're talking now about Arthur Conan Doyle. Yeah, Conan Doyle's estate claimed which element of the Sherlock Holmes mythos? Yes. Mythos, that is the right word, had yes. not been introduced until Casebook, and therefore it was still subject to its in control in the U.S. So we're talking about copyright law in the U.S., and we're talking about Sherlock Holmes. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's not like a like a, a construction company that's building new homes. No. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine. No. I'm, I'm picking up on the typographical error. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. Right, I think we should move on to the answers. And uh, okay, is it the right? Yeah. So, which element of the Conan Doyle's estate is uh, uh, is not been introduced until the case book, so it's still subject to control in the U.S. Is it Holmes' deer stalker hat and pipe? Is it his heroin habit? Is it the fair phrase "elementary, my dear Watson"? Or is it showing emotions and character growth? So, which of those is still three, two? Hey, we got it that time. So, let's see, Catherine, tell us what's the answer. Was showing emotions and character growth. Okay, so Matt, please explain this to us, Matt. 
Yeah, yeah. So this is um, the last uh, the last Sherlock Holmes book. This is actually a 2023 thing. Uh, the last Sherlock Holmes book written by uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes. And that uh, was the last book to expire uh, the rights uh, that to enter the public domain in 2023. And before that, in 2020, um, Doyle's estate decided there were elements of Holmes that were only introduced in the last book that would still be under its control and unsuccessfully sued Netflix over its recent adaptation, uh, saying that it was only in the last book that Holmes showed character growth, emotions was a bit warmer. Prior to that, he was uh, more aloof. And therefore, if you have a Holmes who grows as a character, it is still under, still was under their control. Again, they lost wow. in court, it wasn't successful. I guess you can't blame them for trying. Uh, but uh, <laughs> now it's casebook is in the public domain. So you're free to do this without having to fend off nuisance lawsuits from the Arthur Conan Doyle estate. Yeah, Excellent. something else we can add into our mashup, Phil. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, Caroline, oh, you know, you're just still edging ahead, but yeah. oh, it's still close. It's a close thing. Caroline, clearly very fast on the fingers. Okay. Uh, next right. question. Next question. So what was the name of the IFLA book that uh, Chris and Jane, that's us, wrote a chapter in, which featured on a number of webinars earlier this year, or was actually the end of the year before the beginning of the next year. Yeah. So now we book. know that it is obviously top of everybody's reading list. This yeah. book, it is an open access book as well. Yeah. But so, uh, uh, shall we? Shall, we don't need to say any more about no, it. No, let's look at the options. So, yeah. is it making sense of copyright for librarians, chapter and verse, navigating copyright for libraries, purpose and scope. So, copyright. What's all that about then? Or was it copyright and online learning, a guide for practitioners? So, what do you reckon? I know which one I'd like it to be. I don't. Have we had our time again? <laughs> we, we, our time's not over. There's plenty of time. No, no, but you know, in that Ifla book, we could write another one. We could write another what, an entire edited collection. Yeah. Sure. Hey, okay, right. But right, time's up. Let's have a look. It, it it was navigating copyright for libraries purpose and scope it wasn't copyright and online learning a guide for practitioners that yeah. is out 2016 mm. much awaited sequel because not that's never come but by facet well yes. we'll get there we'll get there we've eventually. replaced that book with the webinar series. okay um caroline still in the lead deborah's not far behind oh, okay yeah. let's go to the next question okay right so we this is about the film metropolis um this is a film that's also i think about to enter the public domain this year entered um, entered the public domain in 2023 so it's now in the public domain thank you thank you for the clarification matt so um there was a west end musical version of metropolis and the, the which British actor played the despotic ruler John Freeman in this 1989 West End musical adaptation of that film? There we go, there's the options. Let's go for it, yep. So was it Oliver Reed? Was it Laurence Olivier? Was it Brian Blessed? Or was it Patrick Stewart? Have you seen, did you see that musical? Was that one you went to? It Instagram? wasn't one I went no, to. See. No, no, no. Um, no, the first musical you ever went to see, though, was Cats. And me, too. Yeah. We like to think we were actually there, we don't we, at the same, same show. Yeah, yeah. Was that 1983? 1982, three, four. I thought it was about four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Okay, so, anyone? Oh. Oh, oh nobody's answered. Oh, oh what happened oh, there? Oh, what was that? Uh... Oh, 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 she's from the room. You can picture it. Oh, no. Let me. Now. Try doing it again. <laughs> okay, let's get this one a go. You can you Is can answer now? honestly, or you you can just treat this as a freebie, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you might want to vote for Brian. Gordon's alive. <laughs> It is the, the musical. I mean, it's the lyrics are horribly, horribly literal. I have listened to it, but you get this boom and then it's the machines are beautiful, more perfect than man. It must have been. 
that. We're not starting to see it was yet. good, but it would have been something to see. No, no. The, the thing in starts when people are allowed to leave. Yeah. They've got to continue with this fun for a more time. So it was so Brian Blessed. Okay. The always understated Brian Blessed. Yeah. Uh, lovely. Okay. Caroline smashing it once again. Yeah. Uh, come on. Come on, people. Come on. Let's see what happens. Okay. There's lots to play for. Okay. Right. So Bill Willingham put which comic book series in the public domain? So Matt, who is Bill? Well, Bill Bill Willingham is a comic book artist who had a dispute with his publisher this year, and uh, he authored a certain comic series that we'll we'll find out here. And he decided it's still disputed uh, by the company if he has the right to do this, but uh, he said, "Forget it. I'm retiring. I'm radicalized on copyright. I believe that after 30 years, all rights should expire. So uh, I'm getting older. Let's just put my stuff in the public domain." Okay, well, let's, let's look theory. at the options. Which one? Let's yeah. Say, Fables, Watchmen, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Dream of the Rare Bit Fiend. Wow. I wish I would play in now. Yeah, I know, but you wouldn't let me. No, because you're not allowed. Mm. Countdown. No, yeah, not quite yet. Uh, okay, what's the answer? It was fables. Forty-seven mm, percent of people got that one right. Okay. But let's have a look. Was it Caroline? Did she get it right? Whoa! Yes. Somebody's been paying attention. Carol, has Caroline got access to the answer? No, surely not. Right. Okay, let's go to the next question. Um. <laughs> This one is about another law case. It is, yes. Matt, tell us about this. Visual Arts Inc. versus Goldsmith. It was about Andy Warhol, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was about a Andy Warhol, I believe, screen print that was based off of a photograph. And um, this was, uh, this has been, of course, disputed in copyright circles. Uh, the assumption was that if the ruling was against uh, against the Warhol Foundation here, then it could really upend a lot about uh, about a particular aspect of copyright law here. Uh, I, I don't want to get into it necessarily too spe specifically to, to spoil the question there, but uh, I haven't heard so much commentary after it happened. So I'm this was at the U.S. Supreme Court level as well. So that that's the issue. Okay. Okay. Final okay. court. So, uh, let's see the so let's see what was the issue? Okay. So, what was Warhol Foundation's unsuccessful defense? Was it that the use was fair or tra transformative use? Was it that there'd been a licensing agreement produced under a prior law? Was it that it was relying on the quotation exception? Or was it that it was fine? The classic finders, keepers, losers, weepers uh, yes. legal argument. Yes, use yeah. that one in court. All the time. At your peril, maybe. At your leisure. At your leisure. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's see what the answer was. I think was it fair use? Was it fair use? It was fair yeah. transformative use. Yeah. So this is a classic appropriation art, fair transformative use case, as in the Richard Prince arguments, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. 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 Okay. Once again, Caroline is steaming away again in the lead right should we go to the next one yes let's go yeah. for it yes okay so this is about uh, uh, open ai how yeah. long to the nearest hour did it take for open ai chief executive sam altman to be reinstated after he was removed from duties by the company's board of directors in november so recent recent topic yeah so let's see the let's see the options was it um 63 hours 99 hours 107 or 124 <laughs> Ooh. If only I could vote. If only you could vote. If only. If only yeah. you'd let me play. Yeah. You still wouldn't beat Caroline. No, I don't think I would. She's not fire. Right, let's see the what the answer was. It was 107 hours. Wow. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so do you want to tell us a bit about this, Matt? 
Um, I wouldn't necessarily have much background to add as well. Uh, it's still, there's a lot of commentary out there on this, uh, and you can read yeah. up on the background there. Um, but, okay. okay. <laughs> Excellent. Well okay. done, Caroline. Okay. Your guessing is pretty good. I'm having you on my quiz team, yeah. I can tell you. Okay, right. So next, another kind of uh, trademark, kind of IP, broader question. So Belgian Customs crushed 2,352 cans of the American beer Miller High Life featuring an advertising slogan that violated EU regional protection laws. And is the question in which country? No, no the question, if we look at the answers, which um, yes, was right. the advertising slogan? Oh, so OK. Was it pair it with Parmesan, the champagne of beers, better than Pilsner or indistinguishable from Evian? Oh, OK. Right. OK. So which which advertising slogan was it that they uh customs claimed violated an eu regional protection law i have to say 2352 cans of beer is kind of a standard saturday night really isn't it yeah it must have had a good time well your house yeah never mind. <laughs> it, it, it is it is american light beer so i'd i'd even after drinking that much i'm not sure you'd uh you'd, you'd experience much <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Yay! So lots of people got that one right. The champagne of beers. How dare you refer to a beer as a champagne? Absolutely. And we covered this, didn't we, earlier on in the year, Matt, when we had the special. So that should be one. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Catherine, how are we doing? And how, how is the end of the site? Uh, I think we're about weird. halfway through, so we might need to speed well, up a bit, okay. I suppose. We're going to speed up. Okay, okay. let's let's wrap okay. through the next few. Yeah. Okay. So this one's dead easy. So yeah. you'll all know this. Which of the following was not created by a member of the Alt Corsic community this year? So it's a copyright education initiative. So which was not created? So was it copyright heights? Was it the copyright escape room? Or was it that fantastic resource copyright sucks? Okay. What do you reckon? Off you go. We could even make the timing shorter. We could. Well, I can. Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. I can skip forward if you want. If we, we think are, that we, we will. Okay. Everyone should know this one. It's copyright stuck. So I was just checking to see whether the uh, creators of Copyright Heights and the Copyright Escape Room were actually with us. They don't appear that they are. Oh. So Tim Riley, Roger we watch it? We watching Erica, the recording. Erica uh, Levy, who works at Coventry. Coventry yeah. Um, created those two excellent resources. Copyright sucks. There's an entry in the marketplace. There is. Yeah, and you can't have copyright on a title. No. So someone needs if to Someone wants it. that one. Well, yeah. Once again, Caroline smashing it. Right. Yeah, let's next go. Question. Next question. Let's find out the next question that Caroline's going to get right. OK, which of the following authors was not edited to fit with modern sensibilities? So let's have a look at our options. OK, so it's the one that was not. Was it not Roald Dahl? Agatha Christie, Ian Fleming, or Dr. Seuss? I think we should end it after 20 seconds. <laughs> did it, did it, did it, did it. Do. <laughs> Maybe we can't do that. Okay. I can, I can, no, I can skip forward. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Right. Ooh. Oh. Oh. This, this one's a bit tricky because uh, the, these are the estates of these authors making these edits, and um, the Dr. Seuss estate, in fact, there was in oh, it, it uh, made the decision not to release six books, but it did not release them in edited format, whereas the okay. others all released edited versions, um, and some of these right. authors were edited when they were live as well, but. Uh, um, you got edits of Roald Dahl, Agatha Christie, and Ian Fleming. Yeah. Uh, you just didn't get the books, period, with Dr. Seuss. Right, okay. okay. We do have a podcast in the tank, which does a lot about Ian Fleming, which mm. will hopefully will get out to you before too long. <laughs> Caroline again. Fantastic. Good work. Right. Yep. Next, next question. Next one. Okay, why did science fiction magazine Clark's World temporarily stop accepting submissions in February of this year? So let's have a look at the yeah. options. Too many AI written submissions. 
their AI software created better stories than the submissions to cut the carbon output of their servers. Well, the editors looked at the world and decided the dystopia was here. <laughs> oh. You familiar with the science fiction magazine, Clark's World? The yeah. one that you read regularly? It's not, not at the top of my list. No, no, no. 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 Just wondered if you read it on Taco Tuesday while oh, drinking yeah. all your beer. Yes. No. Okay, so it's because there were too many AI written submissions. Um, do we, Matt, want to say anything more about that one? Uh, I think they were really ahead of the curve on this. I mean, this was back in February, uh, just when people were really this year in this current cycle of AI discussions. And uh, yeah, it, it was really early warning signs on the things that are happening. Uh, the different Absolutely. uses of AI and where it creates problem points. Yeah, several people are thinking it should have been D, really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. Also, I should add that uh, Clark's World does have very detailed submissions guidelines uh, that are quite useful okay. to look at. Uh, so if you ever want to look okay. it up. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Okay, next question. Which part of Dungeons & Dragons can the Wizards of the Coast not assert IP rights over? So... Um, should we go on to the options? Yeah, let's, let's go have for a it. look and see what they are. Character design, character designs, monsters, and other artwork, the rules of the game, the backstory, content from the out of print first edition of advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Whoa, that's some. You've got to know your Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And this, this context earlier this year, uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast, which owns Dungeons and Dragons, uh, made changes to their open license on what they would control over how user generated content, which is integral to the game, uh, what they would assert rights over. Uh, but they couldn't assert rights over one particular thing here. Okay, let's see what the answer is. The rules of the game. Interesting, interesting. Well, presumably. Because rules are not protected by copyright as an expression. Uh, of, of creativity. Yeah. The rules are not protectable in the way that theories and facts are. It's the old idea, expression dichotomy. It's a little bit like yeah. some of the rules around the publishing trap that we kind of borrowed from other games. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, should we go on? Let's next. go on. Let's yeah. go to the next one. Wow. Caroline, of course, Caroline's still in the lead. There we go. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, this is testing your knowledge of a fantastic resource that was released earlier this year. I think in June, July time, we created a uh, code of fair practice for the use of audio visual works in film education. Along now, with Bart Maletti. Yes. Um, and published by Learning on Screen. So should we see what the options are? So which of the following activities is not addressed by the code? So we've got some great examples. Cross his fingers. Here we go. So is it allowing equitable access to a diverse range of films? Is it allowing students to critically analyse film? Is it adapting films for teaching and learning purposes? Is it giving students popcorn and a nice comfy chair? Or is it format shifting of film content? Um, that's, that's a tough one, actually. I, I find this one really difficult. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, I mean, and we wrote it, and, yeah. and they all just seem so all just kind of obvious things that you'd want to include. In film education, in, in absolutely. Film, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's see who's paying attention here. Of course. <laughs> Where before that shifting? That's ridiculous. No one would suggest that that's a good idea. Uh, Caroline, well done. Well done. Yeah. I think we probably should write a code about giving them popcorn. So. And Next to one. You. Okay, your turn. Which country's courts ruled that the following derivative AI images infringe on the rights of the human artist who generated the first AI image. So when you look at the answers, let's move to them now, you will see that there are uh, the original work on the left and the alleged AI copy. So which country um, said that these were an infringement? China, Japan, North Korea or South Korea? And of course, the key bit on this is that, you know, this, this is like a protection for an AI generated image. Uh, which mm. is a bit more expansive than other countries have ruled. Mm. Mm. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. See if we can okay. catch Caroline out. Let's have a look. It was China. Mm -hmm. It was China. So it just goes to show that there are major differences still between the countries, how they're cheating, treating AI generated works and still no consensus. So where are we with the 
uh, scoreboard. Caroline's still out in front. Mm -hmm. uh, right, let's go to the next question. Uh, which country wrote this? This is another image that's partially uh, AI generated. It's a combination of an AI generated image and uh, another uh, one. Um, and here it is. So, which country said that this was protected by copyright? As you can see, it's got Van Gogh in it, hasn't it? Mm. Or Van Gogh, depending it's on. It's a merger Van Gogh. of a merger of Starry Night and the artist's own photograph. Uh, a photograph, right? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Mm. Blue and white. So, anyone? Ooh. Right. Okay. Oh, Correct good. answer. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So, it was India, this was. Yep. Uh, this was also ruled not protected in the US. So, this is an indication of diversion on particular. Uh, uh, particular, uh, the name of the image is Suryast, uh, if you look it up. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Next one. Oh, Caroline still, although I don't think yeah, Caroline's hanging at the same score, but I think that was a tough one. I don't think many people got that one, right? So let's go to the next one. Okay. After closing their Twitter account, what percentage traffic reduction did NPR, so this is NPR, the public broadcaster in the, in the US, subsequently see to its own website? What reduction? in the traffic. So let's look at the options. One, 12, 17, or 23 percent. This was uh, after the whole Musk, uh, the, the various Musk issues that have happened. Uh, um, Twitter was uh, Twitter, it was Twitter then reclassified NPR's state run media, which typically is for propaganda yeah. channels. They left Twitter and they saw a certain percentage reduction in their uh, their traffic. And the answer Intriguing. is 1%. Ah. So it just goes to show Twitter really isn't what it used to be. No. Um, no or X, no. or whatever we're going to call it. No. Twitter, I think Twitter. We need to go. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's go and see where we are. So I don't think there's much change in the, in the scores. Right, let's move to the next question. Okay. So there is a long running publication and it's going to cease to be sold on American newsstands. So anyone got any ideas of which long running publication this is going to be? Is it going to be People? Is it Harper's Bazaar? Is it Popular Mechanics or is it National Geographic? And then perhaps Matt can tell us a bit about this story. Yeah. I, uh, I subscribe to this and read it regularly. So uh, I. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they also fired all their staff writers, so uh, it's it's not good for uh, this publication. No, no, no. It's another tough one, though. Okay, so the answer is National Geographic. Wow! So they got rid of all their staff writers? This yeah, they're going to. I mean, National Geographic, of course, used to fund quite a bit of uh, relatively longer-term expeditions. To, uh, yeah. to produce well, their yeah. stories, and now it's going to be, I think, on a, uh, a short-term contract basis. Um, mm, this is okay. Disney World as well, and I think it speaks to challenges in the public publishing industry, but also the short-sightedness that you have a, a strong legacy publication uh, that still generates yeah. interest, and uh, they're not going to be investing the amount to create the long-term produced quality content. Uh, that they've been known for in the past. Yeah. Okay. We've got a new player coming up the leaderboard. I can see the Grinch. Oh, the Grinch. Oh. Okay. Well, exciting. Let's steal a big fat copper at Christmas quiz of the year. No, let's, let's get going. Let's going. Okay, so who's been paying attention? Subscribe to our Copyright Waffle podcast. Which of the following people has not been a guest on our podcast to date? So let's see the answers. So is it Richard Ovenden? Is it Emily Drabinsky? Is it Carl K. Courtney? Or is it Mark Lewison? And what are you going to do then? I'm going to put a link to Copyright Waffle in oh, the chat so that anyone who hasn't subscribed yeah. can, can, can follow up. Mm -mm -mm. Excellent. 
We are going to be running slightly over time, I, I think. I think we are. I think we are. So we're going to get through these questions. We'll go though. through it fairly quickly. We're nearly there. Catherine, how many have we got left to go? Oh, and how will the answer? Let's see. What so the answer think? was cut. He, he ha we haven't got him yet. It's no. out, he, he keeps thinking that we have. Yeah. But we will. We, we have, have been lined up. No. Um, so, but the others you can catch on Copyright Waffle. Uh, lovely plug. Yeah. Right. Let's move on to the next thing. Yeah. I think things are all. Oh, the, the question. Are, are you, Caroline, are you getting these all wrong? Is that what's happening? Yes. I think just the top people are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. Right. What percentage of video games that have ever been released are have, now currently still available commercially? Yes. Now okay. Let's have a look. So, percentage point. Two, seven, thirteen, or twenty-one percent. This is a video done and released this year. Okay. 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 Thank you, Matt. Okay. There's two more questions study? after this. Okay. okay great, fabulous. Thanks, right. Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> Screw you. You haven't got to disappear, I hope. Screw you, Nintendo. No, no. <laughs> they are. They are pretty, uh, pretty aggressive. Their copyright. <laughs> but they're so much fun. <laughs> right, what's the answer? 13%. Whoa! So there's a major issue here in, in terms of archiving and um, copyright ethics. That's something, one of the challenges that I certainly had in my day job. Mm, mm, um, mm. Maybe we should get someone from the video games industry to talk to us on copyright waffle. I, I think we should. Or yeah. on, well, let's do yeah. it. Um, yeah. Okay, next, next question. question. Next question. Oh, we're all right, clearly. The leaderboard is kind of... Yeah, Ooh, look at that. It's really close. close. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah. Okay, so in June, a US federal judge sanctioned two attorneys for using AI to write a filing on behalf of their client who was suing an airline. In part, how did the courts know that something was wrong? Let's have a look at the options. So, oh, actually, this is, the, yeah. this is the last question, so it all comes down to this. Oh. Oh, oh, right, oh, okay. Catherine. Okay, building up, building up. at the top. Was well, yeah. it cited Canadian case law? It cited EU case law. It cited non-existent case law. It repeated use of the phrase "kill all humans." So um, let us know what you think. And just remember, it's all to play for now. I think this is going to be between Caroline oh, and Lisa. I think. See. You think so? Ready for that countdown? <laughs> okay. And the answer was that it cited oh. non-existent case law. So it was hallucinating. It, it was, was hallucinating, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So where does that leave us, Catherine? Oh! Well done. It was never really in doubt, was it? The front row. It was at the end. <laughs> Oh, no, I suppose it was. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think that was that was pretty close. I think there, Lisa, you made a very good look at that. Look at that coming mm. up uh, with really only 300 points in it. And Evelyn as well. So, yeah. Caroline, would you like to speak? Take the microphone. Some of you have got a dash. Uh, can you hear me? About... Yeah. Hiya. Well done. Thank you. you. I'm slightly baffled because I was guessing on a lot of those, um, but I'm pleased to have won it on the last question because I still find that whole story about the lawyers hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Lisa, were you still there? Would you like to join us? Would you like to say hello? Hi. Yes. <laughs> Hiya. Hello. Yeah, I'm I'm thrilled that apparently my nerd interests of Dungeons and Dragons and uh, fables and all that helped out. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, well done, well done, and thanks so much to everyone that came along. Thanks from to Matt for getting those questions together, Catherine for making it all happen. Yeah, uh, that's been excellent. There is no prize, is there? Well, I'm sure we can. We can find maybe it. think of one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Yeah, we'll think of a suitable gift for you both. It may be that we'll just release another podcast or something before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully you all found this useful. Uh, lots and lots of copyright news stories as well. And we will stop the recording, I think, in a moment. Yeah, We've just well, got a very, very quick thing. Just but to let you know that we do have some webinars coming up in the new year. and We've got some excellent topics. So we're going to do the future of these webinars. We have Sarah Hammond who, who did the report based on the survey that people filled out what do they want. Yeah. And we're going to be asking 
uh, or talking about what we're, what we're planning to do. Yep. But then we in February, we have uh, Claire Painter and Professor Emily Hudson, who, along with Tanya Applin, um, have written a, a guide on third party copyright research outputs for UKRI, which I think many people are aware of. So we'll be hearing from them. Um, and and then we've topics, got some other topics lined up, haven't we? Yeah, yeah we're we... definitely going to be doing copyright specialist again. Um, so here we might have to come answer. after some of these people that did so well in the quiz as well. I think so, yeah. To find out how they knew your all that you come along and tell us all about how you got involved. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be talking about the ethical framework. We've had confirmation from Natalie um, and Sharon, who've been working on that for alt yeah. ethics in learning technology and how is it you know, linking to, with copyright. Uh, cross border licensing is a topic we think we'll come back to. Yeah, you've been talking to the Swedes, haven't you? We have. Yes, yes. And controlled digital lending. Maybe mm. there's maybe some stuff happening. Let's see, yeah. Yeah. So, on that note, we will say thank you very much for spending uh, your Friday morning with us today. yeah and absolutely huge thank you to Catherine and Matt for yeah. all their work we're putting this together it's big big cheers well done both of you any final words Catherine how does it compare uh, to being on only committee being well it's, it's, it's much easier to ask the questions than to answer them <laughs> <laughs> Matt anything from you um, no, nothing at my end. Uh, thanks for having me once again. And uh, this was really fun to put together. And uh, I hope everyone else also enjoyed it. And all the best for you as well with your uh, new, your, you'll be leaving IFLA, won't you? Um, in yes, the new year. yes. Uh, um, I'll be going on to other things. And if you are looking for a full time colleague, um, do, uh, do message me. Um. <laughs> Particularly somebody who knows a huge amount about copyright and social anthropology and yeah. policy and lots of clever yeah. awesome yep. things so yeah phd yeah, in anthropology as well uh, so yeah <laughs> fantastic okay. fantastic so we've got one last thing and we're going to say just before we stop the recording uh, a great merry christmas oh yes a happy new yeah. year to everyone. yeah 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 thank you for tuning in this year and joining us and, and hope we'll to see back. you next year yeah. we will